Um, I love chips. I love them because they're kind of a free-for-all. You can be relatively creative with what you put in them. They're great for using up a whole lot of bits and pieces from your catch or for using better value fish as well. Today I've got some kingfish, I've got some trevally offcuts, I've got a bit of snapper offcuts. And what I always do with my chowder is that I cook some form of shellfish and a little bit of wine which brings to the table this delicious stock. So come over here and I'm going to show you how I do it. So the first thing I've done is I've, I've rendered off a little bit of bacon. It adds a lovely sort of smoky flavour to the chowder. So to my rendered bacon, I'm just going to add some chopped onion. So it's just cooking in the rendered fat and there's some celery. I've got some chopped fennel here as well. Love fennel bulb in my chowder. Just going to add a little bit of chilli flake. Roasted off a little bit of fennel seed and just ground it up. Just brings out that fennel flavour even more. So we're going to sweat that down for 10-15 minutes stirring occasionally until the vegetables become soft and translucent. So now I'm going to add some of the mussel stock, which is really just the liquid from the mussel and some white wine they were steaming in. But there's a natural saltiness in there. That's going to be my seasoning for the chowder right there. I'm not going to have to add any salt. Chicken stock. Now of course you can use seafood stock. The chicken stock just gives it just a little bit more, I guess, richness to this chowder, which I really love. Next I'm going to add some chopped potatoes. You know, and the thing about a chowder is you're just really adding layers of texture, layers of flavour. Right, it's starting to come up to the boil. My chopped up mussels go in. This was a, a kilo and a half of mussels. Again, this is going to add some beautiful texture and some real interest to the chowder. I've got some lemon zest here. Got this lovely oil in the outer skin of the lemon and it just adds a, a great citrus note in there. And of course we'll use the juice as well. And I'm going to use half the lemon to begin with. I might add some more at the end. The old saying that you've heard from me a million times, once it goes in, you can't get it out. But if I added too much lemon juice to there, it is nigh impossible. Oh my God. I mean, it's not even finished and it is so good already. So, it's come up to the boil and now I'm gonna add my fish. Chowder is something where you can scrape the bones and it's about stretching the catch and stretching the budget. I've got some trevally in here, some kingfish offcuts, and a little bit of teriyaki offcut. The pieces of fish that I'm using here are quite big chunks, so when I put them in, um, they don't sort of dissipate or fall apart. Love to have those big chunks of fish in your chowder. And we put those in right at the end when the chowder's just about ready to be served, that way they don't fall apart. Okay, right, a little bit of cream. And again, another layer of richness to this chowder. And lastly, I'm making this little beurmonier. I think beurmonier in French means to knead butter. I've got some butter and some flour, and I'm mixing those together. And then I'm just going to drop pieces in the chowder. And that's just going to thicken that broth a little bit. I don't want it really sickly thick like a gravy. I just want it sort of silky, but a little bit thicker consistency than a broth. Beautiful. And last but not least, a bunch of fresh herbs. So this is just dill and parsley and that's just going to bring a freshness to all that richness. And that ladies and gentlemen is my chowder which changes every time I do it. You can make the chowder, put it in the freezer if you want, make it fresh, it holds for a few days. In fact it's like any sort of stew, it just gets better and better, like it tastes great now. Tomorrow, next level. Have a go.